Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at um, graphing or solving rational inequalities. So in our last video we talked about, uh, hopefully, depending on which textbook you're working out of, doing these out of order here, if we had something like 1 over x minus 3, we saw that we could graph this and have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, that's not done very well, but x is 3. And then we also saw we have a horizontal asymptote for this one at y is 0. Now, I don't want to go through all of that, but if you um, uh, need it, go check out the old video on this. But what we saw is we could get something like this, and suppose our graph did this. What we talked about was that if, if this asymptote, the asymptote here is 3, if it had a degree of 1, when you approach the asymptote on the other side, you would go in the opposite direction. And so suppose we had this. So we have this asymptote here. On the other side of the asymptote, we would go in the same direction. So even ones will do on the other side. If this was down, this one's going to be down. Now this has an odd exponent of 1. So if it was down here, it's going to be up on the other side. Now this is going to be an important idea as we try to do these rational inequalities. What we need to see if we are to graph this is that we could have these rational functions make some pretty crazy graphs. You could have crazy stuff like this. You get asymptotes everywhere. And so if we wanted to find out where this graph is greater than 0, what we're saying is where are the y values greater than 0? And so what we need to do to figure this out is take a look at something called critical values. We need to look at the points where this could change from being a positive graph to a negative graph. And the places that can, that can happen are at the x-intercepts the roots, the zeros, whatever you want to call them. As you cross over the x-axis, obviously your y values have gone from positive to negative. So we need to find all the x-intercepts. Now another thing that could happen is we need to find where, because of what I was telling you here with this trick, it is also possible that the graph could suddenly just change from negative to positive at the asymptote. So if we had a degree 1, this jumped from down to up. It crossed from, a, from negative values of y, just suddenly instantly jumped up to positive values of y. So another place we could find critical values are at the asymptotes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find these values. We're going to find the x-intercepts, we're going to find the asymptotes, and then we're going to have no other choice but to do some test regions. So let me show you what I mean. So if I wanted to find the x-intercept for this function, that would be when the y is 0. So we're going to treat it like it's f of x equals x minus 1 over x plus 3. And we're going to say this is equal to 0. Not an inequality, we're going to say it equals 0. Now if we were trying to solve this, I send x plus 3 up to the other side, that would be 0. So x minus 1 is 0 is all we would need to do to find the x-intercepts. And we find x is 1. So we have an intercept at 1. Now I'm going to make a number line down here and I'm going to mark that. So at 1, I'm actually going to give it like a barrier line, I have the possibility of changing between a positive and negative. Now let's look at this. We also need to check asymptotes. We have an asymptote at negative 3, so you remember how we would do that? It's just like the denominator cannot be 0, so we set it equal to 0. If negative 3 went in here, we would this function would be undefined, which is how you'd make an asymptote. So I'm going to mark that too. So it is possible that this function changes from positive to negative at the intercept, there's only one, and at the asymptote. And now, what we're going to do is simply test these regions. We're going to pick values from each of the different regions, put them in, and all we need to know is if it becomes positive or negative. Now I'm going to start with this middle one because it's the easiest. I'm going to pick 0. So if I put 0 in for x, I'd have 0 minus 1, 0 plus 3, I'd have negative 1 third. Does that make sense? Just put 0 in for both the x's, I'd have negative 1 third. So in this region, any of the values in this region are negative. So we would know that it has to be because it hasn't crossed one of the barriers that could switch it from positive to negative. So everything in there is negative. Now let's pick something. Let's pick something easy. We'll pick negative 4 here. We only need the sign. I don't really need the numbers, but negative 4 minus 1 over negative 4 plus 3. And I just want to know what's the sign going to be when I finish doing this. Well, it's going to be negative 5 over negative 1. It's going to be positive. I don't need the number, just the sign. So it's positive in this region. 
Now let's check, check over here. Now it's probably positive, negative, positive, but it doesn't have to be. So you do need to check. So I'm going to pick 2 here. So 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 3, I get 1 fifth. Okay, so I've got positive, negative, positive. So I have my regions. Now the original question was this. When is this greater than or equal to 0? Okay, well, we want where it's positive, right? So from negative infinity to negative 3, and I'm going to leave off something for just a second. And from 1 to infinity. Uh, actually, I messed up what I needed to do here. Okay, so we need to say, but this was greater than 0 or equal to 0. So let's look at our boundary points here. At negative 3, could this have been equal to 0? Well, actually, it could not have been. That was an asymptote, and we never reached the asymptote. So there is no way that this could have equaled 0 at that boundary point. So we're going to give this... A parenthesis. Now here's where I messed up. So at 1, could this have been equal to 0 at 1? Yes. We said that was an intercept, and so that would be the point where it's changing over from positive to negative. So that would have been, it is possible to be 0 there, and so we should have said a bracket. Okay? So here are the locations where I could have been greater than or equal to 0. Now we'll practice this. I know this is kind of a lot. Let's do another one. So we need the places where it could cross the asymptote. So we need negative 4, or we need any places where we could change from positive to negative. That is the asymptotes. So negative 4 would be an asymptote. And then we're going to find the x-intercepts, which in this case, all it is is solving x minus 2 equals 0. It's just the top. So x is 2. Okay, so here's my boundaries. Now we're just going to go through this and test the regions. So let's do 0 here. So if I put 0 in, I'd have negative 2 over 4, which is a negative number. Let's test anything in this region over here. So we'll do negative 5. Negative 5 minus 2, negative 5 plus 4, negative 7 over negative 1. So that's a positive. Okay, let's do over here. We'll pick, let's just pick 4. It could be anything. So I've got 2 over 8, so that is a positive. Okay, so here's where it changes. When it gets to negative 4, it changes. When it gets to 2, it changes. Now, we wanted an interval notation. We want the regions where it's greater than or equal to 0. So let's go through this again. So we wanted positive again. So when we get through negative 4, it's positive. Now, do we want a bracket here? We don't, because this is an asymptote. We can never reach there. So we want a parenthesis because you can never get to negative 4. And then we're going to union this. Now we want to go from 2 to infinity. But how about 2? Could we get to 2? Could we equal 0 at 2? Yes, we can. It's an intercept. So bracket. You could have gotten to 0 there. So greater than or equal to 0, and there's our answer. Okay, I'm going to do a bunch of these. This is taken out of the um, intermediate algebra book. It's very good. It has a lot of examples. So if you want to pause this, try this on your own. Go for it. But I'm going to do another one here. So I would have an asymptote at 4. Oh, I did this. Hold on. I did this wrong. So at 4, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. And then if I'm solving this, the x-intercept is just going to be the top. It's going to be x is negative 2. Okay, so now we're going to test our regions. I'm going to pick 0 for this region, and it would be 2 over negative 4. It's going to give me a negative. I pick negative 4 over here. Uh, it's going to be a positive. If I pick 5 over here, 7 over 1, it's also going to be a positive. It doesn't always happen like that. It tends to happen like that, but it doesn't have to. Now we want greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we want the positives again. It keeps doing the same thing. It could be less than. We don't have to have this, but... Now, negative 2, can that be 0 there? It can, because that is just an intercept. And then on this side, we want to go from 4 to infinity. That's where it would be positive. But we can't get to 4 because it's an asymptote. So we have a parenthesis. Okay, now, this one's going to vary it a little bit here. So what we were doing before is that this was uh, had a 0 on the right side. So if it doesn't have a 0, we've got a little bit more work cut out for us here. Um, 
Yeah. The first thing we got to do is alter this so that this side on the right is a zero. And so we're going to have some adjusting to do, and here's what we're going to do. So we need to do like we would do with rational expressions. I'm going to get these to have a common denominator. So I'm going to turn this into 4x over x minus 6 minus x minus 6 over x minus 6. You okay with that? That's still just 1. It's the exact same thing. Okay? And so I'm going to tidy all this up. And now remember the negative is going to go to both of them. So this is going to turn into 3x plus 6 over x minus 6 is less than 0. Okay, so it's been a while since I've done this. I haven't thought through the reasoning of why you have to set it equal to 0. I can't remember what the reasoning is. But it needs to be, we need to work the inequality with greater than or less than 0. So I've adjusted it. So it now is. Now, once I get to this point, it turns into the same problem as before. So we had this extra step. So I've got an asymptote at 6, because I can't let the denominator equal 0. If I solve this top, so again, since it's equal to 0, the top is the only thing that matters. So it's 3x plus 6 equals 0. This is going to be uh, negative 2. So send that over, negative 2. OK, so there's my boundaries. And then it becomes the same thing. I'm going to test this region, but we're going to, we're going to work with this one here. OK, we're going to see, check it here so we can see if it's greater than or less than 0. So put 0 in here. I'm going to get 6 over negative 6. I'm going to get a negative. Let's put negative 3 in here. Negative 9. I'm going to get a positive. Now, I'm not doing all this math to take, so this doesn't take forever, but I'm just putting the values in. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm putting an 8 here, whatever, 9. It's going to be positive over positive. Okay, now we are looking for less than 0 this time. So the region we want is between negative 2 and 6. And it doesn't want any of the possible boundaries because it doesn't have an equal in it. So I'm not concerned with where I um, x intercepts. So my the locations where I am less than 0 are here between negative 2 and 6. And I don't need the boundary points again. One of them's an asymptote anyway. We could never be there. But negative 2, it's not equal to 0. We don't want it equal to 0. So it'll, it'll just be a parenthesis. OK, pause it if you think you've got it. But I'm going to show you another one. OK, so we got to get this. So we have a common denominator, just like we did before. So 1 is the same thing as x minus 3 over x minus 3. So combine this. I've got 3x minus x plus 3. That negative goes to everybody. So I've got 2x plus 3 over x minus 3 is less than 0. OK, now let's do our asymptotes here, So, or in our intercepts. So I've got an asymptote at 3. There's one of my critical points. I'm also going to do 2x plus 3 equals 0. 2x is negative 3, so x is negative 3 halves. OK, so now we have our critical values. Let's test them. So I'm going to be working with this guy. Okay, Don't go back to the original. I'm going to go with this guy, put a 0 in here. I'd have a positive over a negative. So if I put, uh, let's put negative 4 or something in here, I'm going to get a negative over a negative, which would make it a positive. And then we put something like 5 in here, I'm going to get a positive over a positive. So there's my regions. OK, now our regions are done, and we wanted less than less than 0. So we don't, there's no equal involved, so I don't care about the, the critical values. They're not going to be included. So it's going to be negative 3 halves to 3. OK. Yeah, I got another one here. Same idea. Pause this. Try it yourself if you'd like. Got 3x over x minus 4. I'm going to adjust this. So I'm going to adjust this so I have um, this to be less than 0 instead of 2. So I'm going to make this, oh yeah, so 2 over 1, so we're going to have a little bit more work here. I'm going to jump ahead. I hope you follow this. So it would have been 2 over 1, but I'd have to get the bottom to be x minus 4. If you do it to the bottom, you got to do it to the top. So this is just some rational expression stuff that I'm doing here just to get a common denominator. This is like 2 over 1. He needs an x minus 4 on the top and the bottom. 
Okay, so now this is like a negative 2, so I'm distributing him through negative 2x plus 8 over x minus 4. So this is, so tidying this up, I've got x plus 8 over x minus 4 is less than 0. Okay, now we're ready to play the same game we've been doing. I've got an asymptote at 4 and I have an intercept at negative 8. So the top is the only thing that matters to find the intercept. So here's my boundaries. We want this to be less than 0, so let's pick something in here. I put 0, I get a negative. Negative 10 would get me a negative over a negative, and positive 10 would get me a positive over a positive. So there's my boundaries. I want less than 0, so there's no equal involved, so I just need to go from negative 8 to 4, and there's nothing weird happening with the boundaries. Okay, now same thing here, but let's just add a little twist that we've got to do some factoring here to get this down. So we don't know our asymptotes without factoring, but we've done this before. So I'm not going to go through the factoring. I hope you are comfortable with that or check out an old video. So I've got this here, got it all factored down. So I've got asymptotes at 5 and negative 3. Now, what about an x-intercept? Do you remember how we saw this before? If you multiplied this up, like if we tried to find an x-intercept here, there isn't one. So it's only the top that's going to matter in this arrangement, and 5 never equals 0. Like there's no x to solve for. So there's no x I can find that makes that solves for this. So there is no x-intercept. If you tried to find one, you'd be left with 5 equals 0, which is not true. So the intercept does not exist. So here are my only two boundaries, and they're both asymptotes. Now let's pick some numbers. If I pick 0 and here 0, I'm going to get 5 over negative 15, which is a negative. Let's pick uh, negative 5. So this is a little where I get 25 plus 10. So I'm going to have a positive over a positive. Let's pick positive 10. So I'd have 100 it's going to be a positive over a positive. So there's the region. So I'm leaving the arithmetic to you, but uh, hopefully that's easy to do. Now, we don't have an equal sign involved now. We just want greater than zeros. So we don't have any issues with the boundaries. We just want to go negative infinity to negative 3. And we want to go 5 to infinity. And there we go. Okay, how many more do I got here? Ugh, a lot. Okay, I'm going to pick up the pace here a little bit, because this is dragging on. Okay, so I factored this down. I want this to be greater than zero. There's not going to be an x-intercept for the same reason as before. So I've got boundaries of 2 and negative 4. So test my regions. Put a 0 in here, I get a negative. Put negative 5 in here. Yeah, I still get a positive. Put positive 5 in here, I get a positive. So there we go. I know it, it looks like it's always this pattern. It doesn't have to be, but I'm, I, the exceptions are pretty rare, I think. So plus minus plus, we want to be greater than 0. So that would be negative infinity to negative 4. I don't want the boundaries, and they're asymptotes anyway, so I couldn't use them even if I wanted. And then 2 to infinity. Okay, one more of these. X plus 4, x minus 3. It's greater than 0. So if you need help with factoring, look back at that here. So these are asymptotes. So I've got an asymptote at negative 4 and an asymptote at 3. Okay, so test these region. Put 0 in here, I get a negative. Put negative 5 in here. Well, yeah, I'm going to get a positive. Put positive 5 in here, I'm going to get a positive. Okay, so we want to be greater than 0. We don't care about the boundaries because it doesn't have an equal. And I'm going to get this. Okay, one last type of problem. Just check out so we got a few of these here. So we want to do, just like we would do if these were rational uh, e equations, we would want to get these all over the same. So, hold on. I also need to bring this over to the other side. So we got a lot of work set up for us on this one. 
So I need zero to be over here to the right. So I've got to do all this setup. I'm going to get everything over here. I need a zero over there. Now let's get all of these over a common denominator. He needs an x squared, but if I give it to the bottom, I've got to give it to the top. He needs a three, so if I give it to the bottom, I've got to give it to the top. And he needs another x, but if I give it to the bottom, I got to give it to the top. So I've got x squared now minus six minus 5x all over 3x squared is less than 0. Now I, this is out of order, so we're going to always just go descending order on the degrees of the exponents. Okay, now we're set up ready to go. So we have our asymptotes. I have an asymptote. So if you think about this, it's still just, when is this possibly equal to 0? Well, if x is 0, that's it. Now, how about the top? Where are the x-intercepts? So the bottom doesn't have anything to do with it. I would need to factor the top. x minus 6. There's several ways to do to factor this one. Am I right? No, yeah, that's right. Okay, so I also have... So I'm finding the intercepts, but because it's quadratic, there are now two of them. So I've got negative 1 and positive 6. So look what's happened. We've now created all of these regions, which we need to test. So I'm going to work with this guy here and begin testing. So negative 2, if I put negative 2 in here, positive 4, I may need to do this. Positive 4, positive 10, minus 6. Yeah, so that's going to get a plus. Now this is a weird region, so you'd have to actually do a negative like fraction here. Like we'd have to put a negative 1 half. So this is not going to be much fun. So negative one-fourth minus five halves minus six. So I'm using a test point of negative one-half over three times one-fourth. Okay, now all I care about is the sign. So I know there's a lot of weird math here, but it's going to be a negative over a positive. So that's a negative. Now I'm going to take one for this region here. Now you can't take the boundaries. You have to take something in there. So I'm going to take a 1, and I'd get 1 minus 5 minus 6. Okay, so I've got a negative over a positive. And then lastly, we'll do over here, I've got, we'll take anything over here, 10. It's going to be uh, 100 minus 50 minus 6. That actually is going to do this. That's actually going to do this. Okay, so that doesn't happen very much, but we've got it. it didn't alternate. So we want where are they less than zero? There's no equal involved, so we don't have to worry about the boundaries. So it's going to be negative one to zero. That's the region where we would be less than zero. Okay, now I, this is more complicated here, but I'm going to take you through a couple more of these. Bring everything over. You want this side to be 0. Now let's get everything to have a common denominator. x squared, x squared. This guy needs a 2. But if I give it to the bottom, I give it to the top. This guy needs a 2x. So everybody matches now. So I've got x squared plus 8 minus 6x over 2x squared. So that is x squared minus 6x plus 8 over 2x squared, just putting it in the proper order. Okay, it's time to find our boundary lines. So this asymptote, it's an asymptote at 0 again. This can't be 0. Now we're going to factor the top to find the inter uh, the x-intercepts. x, uh, yeah, x minus 4, x minus 2. So I've got them at 4 and two. These are a little tight here, but so we've got four regions again. So we're going to take this guy here and use, put in our negative number, any negative number. So this, let's do negative two. So this would be four positive. Yeah, this is going to be all positive numbers. So here I'm going to pick one. So I'd have one minus six plus eight. Yeah, that's also going to be positive. 
and then here I pick 3, so 9 minus 18. This is going to be a negative. And then if I pick 5, that's going to be a positive. Okay, so here are my regions. So this one does some crazy things, but we just want to know where it's less than zero. We don't have an equal involved, so we're just going from two to four. Okay, I wasn't, I was thinking I may not do another one of these because they're all pretty much the same, but I'll do one more and we'll be done. Okay, set these up all over here. Now let's get a common denominator. So x squared, he needs a three, give it to the top. He needs a 3x, give it to the top. So I've got x squared plus 18 minus 9x over 3x squared, which is the same. I'm just rewriting this, 9x plus 18 over 3x squared. So all that has, has to be, oops, sorry, has to be less than 0. OK, so we have an asymptote at 0. And then if we factor this down, we would have x minus 6, x minus 3. So we also have boundaries at 3 and 6. OK, let's do our regions. So if you put negatives, we're going to work with this guy here. If you put negative 1 into here, you're going to have positive over positive. If you put uh, 1 into here, you're still going to have a positive over a positive. You put 4 in here, you're going to have a negative over a positive. Let's put 10 in here, you're going to have a positive over a positive. So there's our regions. Now we want them to be less than 0, there's no equal involved, so there's nothing strange about that. So we're going to go from 3 to 6. Okay, now um, one textbook I'm working with, uh, I don't have a separate video for when you do these, is polynomial inequalities. Polynomial inequalities, it's all the same concept, but there's not going to be any denominators. And so you don't have to worry about asymptotes. You would just do the exact same game, but you'd forget about the asymptotes, and you'd only check the points where you cross over the x, uh, axis. So same concept, you would just do the same game without the uh, asymptotes.